Good morning, everyone. This is Larry Cedar. Uh, it is uh, Monday morning, April 20th at about 11 o'clock. Just after 11, I'm getting a little bit of a late start today. My apologies. But uh, here we are for another session on scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, which is a form of relaxation which uses the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep physical and mental state of calm. That's all we're doing here. We are incrementally releasing the musculature to achieve a deep state of physical and mental calm. That's this whole process. It's a very simple to use technique. It's very simple to learn. You'll learn it the first time I go through it. You'll know it. You can go off on your own then and practice as much as you want. Or <clears throat> you can stick around and, uh, and just do it with me because I'm doing it as much for myself as you. This is a half an hour for me to take advantage of these techniques to get myself into a deep state of relaxation and calm because... Lord knows we all need to relax these days with everything that's going on. But before I start, I wanted to talk a little bit today about the concept which is at the root of this technique, which is that the universe is based on two distinct actions. Everything in the universe can be boiled down to whether something is contracting or expanding. Contracting or expanding. I'm going to move a little bit here because I see the light's a little low. <clears throat> This idea is uh, something which we all instinctively know, but basically it was laid out for me in a book by a man named Thaddeus Golas, G-O-L-A-S. And he wrote these concepts in a book he titled The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment. It was written back in the 60s or 70s, I can't remember which. The original manuscript was handed out as a stapled together stack of papers he handed out in Haight-Ashbury up in San Francisco. <clears throat> but then he um, eventually found a publisher and he published a book. It's a very slim 90-page volume called The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment. It's since been updated. Uh, the original version, which I have a copy of, is no longer uh, in publication, but you can get the updated version. I like the original version best, but again, his name is Thaddeus Golas, G-O-L-A-S. And Thaddeus, in this book, lays out the concept of expansion and contraction, how the universe is basically in either expanding or contracting. Now, we all know the rule of entropy. The rule of entropy in physics says that left to their own devices, everything in the universe will expand or move towards chaos and disorder. That's just the rule of the universe. Anything left <clears throat> alone eventually, even if it's been contracting or expanding, eventually will run out of energy and just dissipate. So we have to work very hard. We have to form contractions to form this life of ours, these, these bodies of ours, the clothes we wear, the things we do. These are all contractions. These are created by energy and effort and an attempt by us to create institutions, uh, thoughts, books, ideas, objects. We bring things together in a contraction <clears throat> to form those things. It takes effort. It takes energy. But any of these things in the universe left alone will dissipate through the law of entry and expand until it is just left to nothing. So these are the two basic rules of the universe. The same thing applies to our bodies. The reason I developed this technique, which is called scanning, the incremental release of muscular tension, <clears throat> was based on the notion that in life, in life, in our lives, we tend to lean towards more of a contracted mode. The simplest way to describe that would be tension, tension, contraction. And we tend to to be more contracted than we need to be to the point of it being self-defeating. So this attempt on my part, which I call scanning, to incrementally release the muscular tension in the body and thereby the mind, is an attempt to move you back in the other direction so that you have a balanced life. Because in life, we need both. We need contraction and we need expansion. But there needs to be a balance. <clears throat> so this is an attempt to get us back to center the incremental release of muscular tension. So I'm going to show you the basic technique, see how it feels for you, see if it works for you, if it resonates for you. You could take it from there, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the concepts that go along with this technique. But basically, scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, as in scanning the body, is a strictly physical process. There's no philosophy behind it necessarily. There's a theory, but there's no ideas. There's no book you need to read. There's no app you need to download. There's no class you need to go to. You can do it by yourself anywhere, anytime. You could do it for 30 seconds or you could do it for an hour, whatever you feel. The goal in this technique is to release muscular tension. And why incremental? Because if we say to the body, just relax completely, it resists. Contractions, we're a contraction, are not easily released. They come together for a reason, be it fear, be it to achieve a goal. So when you say relax, the first thing the body does is say, why? What's, no, I'm in a holding pattern. So this is a way of gently coaxing the body into releasing the musculature, which in turn, in my opinion, releases the mind. 
So all you do, <clears throat> if you want to learn the process in one minute and then be on your way, is clasp your hands together. Now I've got my elbows raised, rested on the arms of this chair, but you can put your hands in your lap. <clears throat> clasp your hands together and squeeze. That is, is that a contraction or expansion? It's a contraction. This is the state we have ourselves in 90% of the day. Contracted, making an effort, trying, defining something, creating something, a form, a structure, contraction. That's fine. That serves a purpose. But if we want to be balanced in our life, we need to know how to go in the other direction, which is release. They feel different. Contraction, expansion, which is the same as release. So just do that. Contraction, feel what it feels like. Expansion. Now you'll notice a set of feelings <clears throat> that goes with those two those two choices. With contraction, how does that feel? You're making an effort. You have to hold it. It doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> it doesn't naturally stay in that state. Take some mental effort, some physical effort. When I say three, two, one, release, how much effort does it take to release? None. So why not do it all the time? Because it means letting go of control. And that's a little scary. But that's what I want you to get comfortable with, that feeling of release. Because if you can get comfortable with that feeling of release and familiarize yourself with how it feels as it passes through your body, you'll begin to see the benefits and you'll let that sense of release pass through your body until your entire body is willing to relax and expand and you will be calm and centered and your mind will also be quiet. That's the entire technique. Squeeze your hands together. Pay very close attention to what that feels like because what this, what this technique is at root is... A discipline. It's learning a discipline just like you'd learn a dance routine. And if you're not familiar with it, it takes a while to get familiar with it, but as you practice it, you'll get better. So <clears throat> squeeze the hands together, pay very close attention to what that contraction feels like. And now my count, you're going to do the opposite, which is complete release. And you're going to pay very close attention to what it feels like to release muscular tension in one part of your body and see if it spreads to the rest of your body. Ready? Three, two, one, release. Take a deep breath. Now you've just released the tension in your body, perhaps 1%. That's a victory. You move yourself in the opposite direction. Contraction, expansion. We're using the hands as a metaphor for that process. Do it again. Squeeze the hands together. And on my count, three, two, one, release. And let that sense of release pass through your body. Another form of release is a deep breath. Your body will now tell you it wants a deep breath. Take that breath. <sighs> Exhale. You've just released the tension in your body. Another 1%. Step three of this process, if step one is clench and release, step two is deep breath. <sighs> Exhale. Exhale. Step three, the most important step, is a still, quiet observation of those changes. Study your body as if I was going to have you do a book report after these 15 seconds, where I would have you list all the experiences you're feeling in your body as a result of those two simple steps, the release and the breath. 15 seconds, still quiet study. Deep breath. So now, if my theory is correct, we have gently coaxed our body to incrementally release the smallest amount of tension. It's not huge. We're not in a deep state, but we are that much more relaxed. I can already feel the changes in my body. I feel my heart beating more freely. I feel the blood circulating more freely. I feel a slight throbbing in my feet and hands and face as the blood circulates more freely. All we're doing is getting off the treadmill. Life is a treadmill, constantly moving forward, constant contraction, constant thinking, constant efforting, efforting. And all we're doing is saying, take 30 seconds, take a minute, take an hour, and re-familiarize yourself with something you instinctively already know, and that is that relaxation, release, also has equal, if not more, value. <clears throat> not only that, but if you practice it, it will balance your life. Because extensive contraction inevitably what ties you up 
and you freeze. You have to learn how to let go to be a free creature. So again, clasp your hands together. Three, two, one, release. Let that sense of release pass through your body. Now your lungs want to take a deep breath, so do it. 15 seconds of still, quiet observation. Deep breath. So now I want to talk a little bit about the concept of resistance. Resistance, an unwillingness to let go. We hold a lot in life. We hold on to our ideas, our thoughts, our titles, our money. We hold a lot because we're afraid. We're afraid to let go. We hold on to the concepts and ideas and objects and video games and computers and cars. We hold on to things because we feel they make us complete and safe. So if you ask yourself to let go and release, to stop for two minutes thinking about those things, to stop for two minutes holding your body like armor around you, to let go, we are resistant to that change. We're resistant to releasing. Why? Because it's frightening. It's scary. It's scary to go to nothing because then what are we? How can we feel secure in this world? How can we feel safe if we've let go of all these things we hold as a protection, the things which define us, the muscles which guard us? Who are we? If we let go of all those protections, when well, we're vulnerable, we're nothing. At least that's how it feels. So we resist. This process is often met with resistance. I myself, who do this every day, have done it for years, thousands of hours. Every time I start, I don't want to do it. I resist because I don't want to let go of control. And yet, it's only when we let go of control, when we let go of all these things we're holding on to, when we release and let them fly and come back to just being and experience our heart beating and our blood flowing, it is only when we release that we truly are engaged with our true self and we truly know who we are at our root and then we are truly most at peace and confident because we realize at that moment we don't need any of those things to be. And then we really can relax. For myself, when I'm, if you want to call it teaching, I feel like it's more like sharing. When I teach these sessions, as I go deeper into the session, I feel less of a compulsion to talk, less of a compulsion to demonstrate, because I begin to sense that I can just be. And if I was going to share anything with you, it would be that you too can permit yourself to can allow yourself to just be that's the best place of all but instinctively it seems wrong if i say to someone why don't you want to release and let go and relax they say it's boring i get antsy uh, it makes me uncomfortable i'm a little scared i feel so exposed yes 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 and yes all those things you experience all those things but if you can pass through that fear, if you can pass through that resistance, anytime you feel resistant, what are you doing? You're holding on, you're contracted. If you can pass through that resistance and let go, you will discover a whole new world. If I may use that Disney phrase. A place where you don't feel compulsion to do. You don't feel afraid of being nothing. You don't feel exposed. You don't feel in a rush. You don't feel like you have no time. You don't feel antsy or bored. You feel at peace. You feel centered. You feel at one with yourself. So it's very natural in talking about the concept of contraction and release to include the concept of resistance because it's a choice. Contract, release. Who decides if that happens? You do. And you may feel a resistance to yourself because you have a consciousness and your body has a consciousness. Your, your emotions have a consciousness. So while you may intellectually understand that this will be good for you, your body instinctively feels otherwise and resists. So we have this accumulated contraction, this accumulated 
coming together of the musculature and the mind. The mind contracts as well. It overthinks things. It obsesses about things. These are contractions, holding on to ideas and thoughts and feelings. This entire being will resist this process because contractions are designed to protect, to create, to build a world. And to let go of them is frightening, so you will feel resistance. Anytime you feel resistance to any sort of change, take that as a sign that you are in a contracted state. Because when you are completely expanded, you have no resistance to anything. Everything is fine. Within reason. Even if it's dangerous, what's going on in the world, when you are expanded, you acknowledge the dangers and you can more clearly deal with them with a clear head. So you don't feel resistant when you're completely expanded. You are accepting. And you work more intelligently because you're not denying any concept or object. You're expanded. You're not resistant. So I say this to merely suggest to you that when you experience resistance, when someone says to you, let's, let's meditate, let's scan, let's take a minute to release, and you say, ah, I don't want to, I want to feel like, why? Why? What's a minute? It's a clue. When you feel resistant, it's an indication that you are in a contracted state. And the very thing that might help you the most when you're in that state is to relax and to release. So resistance is a good sign because that means you're confronting your own contraction and you're dealing with it. I had an interesting experience yesterday because I go through the same things as everyone. I didn't want to do this process and I do it on my own outside of these sessions and I really was resistant to it and I wondered why. And I thought, well, because I'm not tense, I don't feel wound up, I don't need to relax. But I didn't feel wound up or tense. I felt kind of lethargic and maybe a little depressed because you know what this is all doing to us, this this uh, pandemic, we're all getting a little nutty. And I was lethargic and I just, no, I don't want to. And then I went, wait a minute, that's a form of resistance, but I don't feel tense. I don't feel like I'm holding on to my muscles. I don't feel like I need to release. You know where I was holding on? In my mind. I was contracted in my mind. I didn't want to think about things. I didn't want to change. I kind of had locked down into a, into a state of just kind of holding. It was a form of resistance to the reality around me. And depression is frequently a form of contraction, pulling in, resisting reality, an inability to deal with and accept reality. It's a form of contraction. So that resistance I was feeling was a clue. And I said, wow, I really need to do this now. I really need to release. And this technique, the beauty of this technique is there's no intellectual approach to it. It's strictly a muscular approach. So whatever you are thinking or feeling emotionally, it's still very simple to contract and release. That There's nothing holding you back from doing that. If I'm depressed and someone, has, someone says, come on, cheer up. Well, I can resist that. That's an intellectual process and my mind can find a way around it and say, I don't feel like it. Or, no, I'm happy. But if I just approach this from a muscular point of view, I just say, okay, look, you're resistant. Let's see if we can find some release in your system. Clasp your hands together and on my count, three, two, one, release. Let go, let go, let go. Breathe. And then check and see how that feels throughout your body. Resistance is a tricky a tricky little devil. Sometimes it hides deep within us. It's not always muscular, but the muscles can the muscles can trick internal resistance to release. The mind and emotions follow the muscles. So when you are emotionally contracted, you may not feel tense, but you might feel depressed or closed off. You can trick the inner being into release through this muscular technique. This is perhaps a dumb technique in that there's no real philosophy behind the technique. The technique is just contraction and release and becoming aware of what the sensations of release feel like. Heightening your consciousness of release, becoming more attuned to when you're contracted. It's building an awareness within yourself that you can be somewhere on that range, completely contracted, completely expanded, and find out where you are. We tend to be contracted and find a way to release. So we're just building a sense of awareness. So let's do it again. Clasp the hands together. And on my count, three, two, one, release. Let that sense of release pass through your body. All we're doing is incrementally releasing the muscles of the body. Deep breath. And again, you may say, but I'm not tense. I'm just, you know, I'm like a days ago. Again, you could be depressed. So you might say, why should I work on relaxing? Because we're using this process to, as I said, trick the emotions in the mind into expanding, to introduce the feeling of release 
and openness and awareness and expansion into the emotions as well as the mind, as well as the muscles. So I realized that last night, that I was emotionally contracted. I was mentally contracted. I was closing off. I was pulling in. And I think in response to the situation, you know, we've all spent a lot of time in our houses. And it, uh, it does tend to get a little bit depressing. So I had closed off. And even though I thought to myself, well, I'm not feeling muscularly tense. There's no point in doing this now. I realized that I could trick my emotions, my mind into expanding, to opening up to this reality just by practicing this technique. And it worked. I became aware almost instantly how I was really actually holding on quite a bit. I was really closed off as a way of protection. All this contracting is the body and the mind protecting itself from, its, from emotions, from physical danger. It's all legitimate. There's nothing wrong with it. You've got to love everything that happens in your body. But you also have to realize that you can, you can help your body. Because the body's it's kind of dumb in that it just reacts to things. It closes off. It just out of fear. But we're smarter than that. We're spiritual beings. And we can help ourselves by moving ourselves into a, a greater state of expansion. So let's do it again. Clasp the hands together. Three, two, one. Release. Deep breath and exhale. And then step three, 15 seconds of paying very close attention to what those sensations of release felt like and how they've changed your body. As you feel the blood flow more freely, your heart pump more freely, you're beginning to have sensations in your limbs, you're settled more into your chair. You're opening up, you're expanding. Again, clasp the hands together. Three, two, one, release. Deep breath. 15 seconds of still, silent observation. We're becoming an expert in the process of relaxation and release. And in doing so, becoming an expert in how our own body's processes work. Deep breath. Yeah, so this session, I really want to make the point that be aware of not just the contraction of the musculature, but of the contraction of the mind and the emotions. Be sensitive to the idea that you might close yourself off. And that is a form of depression, closing yourself off, going into a state of denial, not wanting to deal with or accept the things going on around you, pulling in as a place to hide and be safe <clears throat> from whatever is frightening you or disturbing you. Expansion, release, as indicated by muscular release, is a way to open up, let go, and once again, be free. We have a lot we're dealing with now. There's two ways to deal with it. In a closed off way, hiding, contracted, or in an open way, intelligently, free, relaxed, prepared. That's what we're shooting for. So that's the basic technique. And now I'm going to take you into the second half of this session. I think, oh my goodness, uh, I think we've only got like five, ten minutes left. Into a more specific approach, which is the way I actually do it. Um, the hands are a great way to kind of teach it. But in terms of more specifics, sometimes <clears throat> you can really delve deeper into where you're hiding pockets of tension in your body. Again, these are just the chipping away at the stone. And as your body begins to release, as you find pockets of tension and you release them incrementally, the body starts to realize this is a really good thing. And it starts to get on board and say, yeah, I want to do this. And the body will begin to release of its own accord. So you start with these very specific areas, but it's like trying to push a, a truck with a, you know, when the, the battery died. Initially, <clears throat> it's very hard. As you get some momentum, eventually the truck will just start rolling and eventually it'll just roll down the hill itself. So that's what you're shooting for. So I have what I call eight zones of release eight zones. I've just basically divided my body into eight specific zones that I concentrate in a cycle. I move through them and then I repeat. And this is a way again of chipping away at the tension, at the holding, at the contraction that's going on in your body. Zone one is the face. Now, you can imagine we hold tension in every part of our body, some more than others. So tune into your particular tension. How are you feeling in terms of the muscles of the face? Take a moment to register perhaps where you're holding tension in your face. You're your brow, your eyes, your mouth, and on my count, release the tiniest incremental amount of tension from your face. Three, two, one, release. And again, typically, I will take a deep breath after that impulse because of release because I've sent a message to the body that we're relaxing. The body immediately responds with, oh, then it's safe to breathe. Follow that instinct. Let your body come along for the ride.
So you may have felt a slackening of the jaw, a loosening of the tension in your forehead, a softening of the eyes, and maybe a slight opening of the mouth as you let those muscles go. Register that and let's do it again. The face, three, two, one, release. You'll feel your skin drooping. That's good. Zone two, the top of the head, what I call the skull. Three, two, register the tension, one, and release. We tend to tense that area when we're thinking. It's the skull, the brain, obviously. Again, three, two, one, release. Now you've done the face and the top of the head. They're each 1% more relaxed than they were a moment ago. And in a way, you may sense them connect. They're joining up. The body wants to hold hands with itself. It doesn't want to be separate. It wants to be unified. So the face now joins the top of the head. Now we're bringing along the back of the head, what I call the cap. Three, two, pick up the tension. One, and release the slightest amount of tension in the back of your head. And again, deep breath. Pick up whatever tension you're feeling in the back of your head. Three, two, one, release. Now, you've had this hood over your head, this hood of tension, and you've just released it 1%, maybe 2 Register that change. Acknowledge it. This is an area that you want to become familiar with because you're going to want to do this again and again throughout the day. You're teaching yourself how to relax. And you're gently coaxing the body through the incremental release of muscular tension. Incremental. Don't ever demand anything of the body. It will freeze up and lock up. It doesn't like to be bossed around. The body likes to be coaxed. It's on your side, but first you've got to make your case. And your case is this. If you'll come along with me for this ride and release the tiniest amount of tension, I promise you, not only will it be safe and okay, you'll be okay, but also it's going to feel good. And your body goes, all right, I'll listen. I'll give it a shot. So now we approach the neck. Now, a lot of tension in the neck. Focus in on that tension, the front and back. Three, two, one, release. <sighs> a little scary, letting down your guard. You feel exposed. You feel like if someone was to come around the corner and attack you now, you might not be as prepared because you let down your guard. Guess what? You're more prepared because now your reflexes will be that much sharper because you've released that tension in your neck. Again, the neck. Three, two, one, release. So now you've released 2-3% of the tension in your face, the top of your head, the back of your head, and your neck. Your entire, this entire area is a little bit more relaxed. It's hanging from the skull. It's drooping. It's just allowed to breathe. You're perhaps feeling sensations in those areas you haven't felt for the entire morning because you were holding on. The blood is circulating more freely in those areas. And perhaps that sense of release is passing into other parts of your body. You can feel the other body is, parts of the body are perking up their ears and going, something's going on over in zones one, two, three, and four. Hmm. Sounds like it feels good. Seems to feel good. Ah, I think I might join in. You'll see. One, two, three, four. Zone five, the shoulders. Pay attention to the tension in your shoulders. And you're going to incrementally release the smallest amount of tension. Three, two, one, release. Let them just drop. Now, I felt my hips also relax. Again, be open to the possibility that other parts of your body will tag along. Let that happen. The shoulders, again, three, two, one, release. Deep breath. And remember, it's very important to remember that any resistance you feel to this process, any part of you says, oh, I don't want to do that, no, it's a good sign. That means you're chipping away at that guard. You're chipping away at that tension. The initial response of resistance is your body trying to protect you. Good for the body. Acknowledge that. Thank it. But say, guess what? That's cool. We're going to try something different now. Indulge me. So we've done the shoulders. Now we move to zone six, the front of the body, what I call the armor. The chest, the stomach, and the front of the waist. Pick up the tension. One, three, two, one. Release. Let it just sag on your body. Let these muscles go. You're slumping deeper and deeper into your chair as you begin to let go of the sense of holding that's had a grip on your muscles. Again, the chest, stomach, and front of the waist. Three, two, one, release. Now you're turning into, you'll excuse my expression, a big slab of beef. You're becoming this one just piece of flesh. You're just relaxing and you can feel you're experiencing your skin and your body as flesh and bones and muscle. It's a great feeling. You're feeling yourself again. One of the things that happens as a result of tension is you cut off feeling. 
and you cut off emotion. You really tie yourself up and we have to do it. You can't go into a battle like a blubbering emotional, you know, mess. You got to gird up. You got to put your emotions aside. You got to fight sometimes. But when you're not fighting, why should you maintain that tension? Why shouldn't you release, allow your body to breathe more freely, allow the oxygen to flow more freely, allow yourself to recuperate, allow yourself a moment of calm. You deserve that and it's good for you. You go into the next battle that much more physically prepared. Top front of the body, chest, the stomach, the waist. Now we're moving into the back, the part that's pressing against the chair. So you really can feel that down into the waist and pelvis. This is a big zone. Zone seven, the back down into the pelvis. Pick up whatever tension you're holding back there. Three, two, one, release. And you'll feel the front now come along the shoulders, the neck, the back of the head, the top of the head, the face. Now they all want to come along for the ride. It's a giant train towards release and they're all jumping on board because it, they're starting to notice it feels good and they want to join in. Again, the back. Three, two, one, release. All the way down into the pelvis. The pelvis is a very potent area, obviously. It's a sexual area. It's an area of, shall we say, elimination. It's very sensitive. We hold a lot of fear there, a fear of embarrassment, fear of the feelings of desire. It's an area which causes us some disturbance throughout the day because, you know, we, we fear loss of control in that area. So we hold a lot of tension in the groin and rear area, the whole pelvis. So be aware of how you might feel uncomfortable letting go of stress or tension in those areas. Let that go. Tiny amount. It's safe. You're okay. You're home. You're in a chair or wherever you might be. No one has to know what you're doing. All you're doing is letting go of an incremental amount of tension. And that's frightening. If I say to you, let go of the tension in your groin, you go, hang on a second. What? Wait a minute. No. Very scary. But nobody has to know. All you're doing is finding pockets of tension in your body. All I'm doing is suggesting that that area is a sensitive, fear, fear-filled place. And it's good that you protect yourself, but in these moments of scanning, it's okay to let go a tiny amount. It's all connected. The head's connected to that area, to the feet. So all you're doing is inching your body along towards total muscular release and thereby mental release and calm. Final zone, down the legs and into the feet. Three, two, one, release. Particularly the feet, you might feel a, a throbbing in your feet as the blood flow suddenly and instantly increases. That throbbing sensation is an excellent sign that you've expanded the muscles, the veins, capillaries, arteries are more expanded, the blood is flowing more freely, your blood pressure has dropped, your body is working more efficiently and openly. Deep breath. But now I'm going to say something to you I haven't said the entire session because I started out by saying it was too difficult. But I'm going to ask you now, because you've reached this point, to release the tension in your entire body. On my command, with just 1%, just take a stock of your entire body. You've chipped away at a little bit. You can do it now. Three, two, one, the whole body, release. Let go. 1%. Deep breath. One more time, the entire body, from the face, top of the head, back of the head, neck, shoulders, front of the body, back of the body, into the pelvis, legs and feet. Three, two, one, release. It's a dropping sensation. You're just dropping. What are you dropping? You're dropping your resistance. You're letting go of resistance. So there's a sensation, literally a sensation of dropping something. You are holding something and on, on that count, you drop it, you let it go, you let go. And why does it feel so good? Because it takes effort to hold something. And suddenly, you don't have to make that effort, you can just be. So when I say the entire body again, three, two, one, let go. Even if it's the slightest change, you need to register that, acknowledge that, confirm that, Remember that. That's the sensation we're looking for. We're looking for that sensation of release, of letting go, of dropping your mental and physical sense of obligation and action. We're removing for a minute or two or a half or an hour or an hour, whatever you can spare, that sense of compulsion that puts you at the starting line and gets you ready to go. We're dropping that. We're saying there's no race to be run at this moment. The race has been called off. I know your body thinks it was supposed to run a 100 meter dash, in the next few minutes, but I'm telling you the race has been canceled. As you know, the Olympics have been canceled. So have a seat. You don't need to run that race. So what does the body do? It goes, well, are you sure? And you go, yeah. Yeah, you can let go. 
You can relax. You can sit in your chair and do and think and feel. Well, not feel. Do and think nothing. You can just be. And that place, what I call home, is the goal. Not permanently. It's a place we go to to recuperate and rejuvenate, to heal, to feel good, to feel calm, to clear our minds. It's a place we go to to balance our life. Because as I said, we spend a good deal of our life contracting, reaching for things, grabbing things, holding on to things, and we become imbalanced. Let's say this is you. Your atoms and molecules, and then you form a body. And eventually you form a fist. Now you're contracted. You're a being. You can identify it. It's a fist. All right, well, that fist is very effective. You can punch your way through walls. You can do a lot of damage. You can create a lot of action in your life. But if you try to move up against other solid things like yourself, what happens? Resistance. You're too solid. You become closed off to yourself and to others. When you expand, you're the same hand, but now there's room. There's room for thought. There's room for feeling. There's room for possibility. There's room for being. So that's all we're doing. We're balancing off. We're balancing the contraction in our life with a sense of expansion and release. And this practice is a way of reintroducing it into your mind and consciousness if you've perhaps drifted away from that sense that that had any value. You know, it's why I get so much resistance on my own part and from other people when I say, how about we take a few minutes to relax because they go, that has no value to me. What has value to me is achieving, contracting, grabbing things, giving myself titles, making money, obtaining objects, smoking, drinking. These things outside of myself are what have value. Doing nothing, what value does that have? Well, it has all the value because we are basically nothing. We are just beings. We acquire all these things. But we need to remember that if we had none of those things, we still exist. And that's beautiful. We are complete. So all this process is doing is reminding you that to do nothing, to be nothing, to go nowhere, to not think about anything, is completely valid. Not only that, it's valuable because it reminds you that you, just you, sitting, breathing, relaxing, doing nothing, is everything. That's you. That's your core. So we can stop being so afraid of losing control of all these external things in our life because we know that even if we lose it all, what are, what are we? We're back to ourselves. So if you practice this technique and you become familiar with how good it feels just to be, if you can get past the resistance and the fear, dropping all those things for five minutes, a half an hour, an hour, and come to this place, you begin to build that, as I call it, tool and strengthen that tool in your life tool chest. And you begin to recognize that it's not only as important, it's maybe more important than all those things. So you want to revisit this place more frequently. It makes you healthier. It makes you happier. It makes you more content, more confident. More than any book you can read, any app you can play, any internet you can study, any television you can watch, any food you can eat. Coming back to just nothing, being yourself, is more satisfying than any of those external things we convince ourselves that we need. And being needy does what? It makes us vulnerable. It makes us feel weak because we feel we can't exist without that thing outside of ourselves. So it makes you insecure and fearful. But when you come back to this and realize that what, what you are underneath all of those things, without any of those things, then you can relax because I didn't need any of that stuff. It's nice. It's life. It's great. But what's best is just being, just experiencing myself. That's the best thing. So practicing scanning, the incremental release of muscular tension, allows you to come back to that place of nothingness, of complete release and expansion, and confirm, reaffirm its value so that you can not only find some respite from your life and calm, we need to do that, but you can also build a sense that all these things out there are not as important as you thought they were. So you can approach your life with more calm. It's nice if I can get that. But if I don't get that, that's okay. That's nice too. You begin to build a sensibility that without anything external, you're just fine. You're just fine because you're what? You're you. 
How do you know? Because you've brought yourself to this place of still, quiet, calm. You've let go. You've passed through the resistance. You've dropped all the externals. And you've experienced how good it feels just to be you. And you're going to want to stay there. You may say, I'm going to, I'm going to practice this for five minutes. And you may get there and go, damn, this feels good. I'm just, I'm so, I'm just relaxed. I just feel at peace. I've forgotten all these things I thought I needed to worry about. That sense of compulsion, that sense of going to the starting line is gone. I'm just, it's what we pay thousands of dollars to when we go to the Bahamas to get that experience. But why should you have to pay thousands of dollars and get on a plane and fly, you know, hours and hours and carry all a bunch of luggage and spend it? A ton of money to feel this way. Why shouldn't you be able to make yourself feel this way anytime? Again, going to that place is great. Vacations are great. But that feeling like I can't relax unless I go to that place, that's not so good. Because then you feel dependent on external structures. It's all fine. But there should be some part of your life where you can say, I don't need to do or go. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to go anywhere. I can just be. And that's the purpose of this technique. And that's it. I'm going to call it a day. Um, again, the process is called scanning, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. It's the incremental release of muscular tension for the purpose of achieving a deep physical and mental state of calm, and might I add, well-being. Uh, I will repost this session if you missed any part of it and you want to watch it again from the beginning. I'll post it on Facebook. It'll stay up for about 24 hours. And then I move it over to the scanning Facebook page. That's S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. If you do a search, you'll find that page. And every session I've done for the past several weeks is there. And you can watch any of them or all of them at your leisure. Uh, certainly, if you feel like you've learned it, um, I congratulate you and go on your way because this is something basically we all know instinctively. I'm not, I'm not breaking any new ground here. I'm just, I found that it works for me and I'm just sharing it with you. Just let go. Just relax. Just be. It's very simple. Start with the muscles. Small steps. I also post the videos on the YouTube scanning page, S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G. You can find them all there. I try to do these sessions as, as a minimum two a day, 11, 4, and 8 is usually when I put them in. I'll usually grab two of those times. So I'll be back this afternoon if you want to join me again. In the meantime, stay calm, stay relaxed, love yourself. It's all good. Just got to stay calm and, and uh, approach, approach this life, this crazy time with a clear mind and a relaxed body. Uh, this is Larry Cedar saying goodbye for now. Have a great day and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.